Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I'm going to review the IBM Machine Learning Professional Certificate. Now, you may have heard of the Data Analyst and the Data Science Certificates uh, that look very similar to this. Where the Data Science and Analyst are actually very similar to each other, uh, basically just a rebranding of the term Data Science with a tiny bit of Machine Learning for the IBM Data Science, uh, the Machine Learning here is actually its own unique thing. It, uh, it doesn't really share any of the courses, it has its own set of material, and it's, uh, it's by this guy here, Joseph, instead of the, uh, I think his name is Rob, the other professor. So this thing is really good. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very familiar with it. Maybe you've seen other of my videos where I talk about it very briefly. Uh, I'm a big fan of this and I wanna do a full review of it. It's 4.7 stars on 600 ratings. You know, that's a pretty low number and it genuinely surprises me. I, I wish that it was a lot higher than it was. So skills you will gain, data science, of course, deep learning, Note that that is a very, very important one and rare deep learning. So neural networks, the IBM data science does not talk about that. It sticks to the scikit-learn traditional models. Artificial intelligence, we very strongly associate that with deep learning, so that's not too surprising. Uh, machine learning, of course, it's a subset of deep learning, or sorry, other way around, deep learning is a subset of machine learning. Uh, Python programming, so this is in Python. Feature engineering, so how to uh, make better inputs so that your deep learning models uh, will understand the, uh, the underlying data better. Statistical hypothesis testing, okay, another thing that we don't touch on too commonly, hypothesis testing uh, in Python, it's great. Exploratory data analysis, pretty common, but it's still good to go over that. Regression, supervised learning, by the way, regression is supervised learning, it's just um, regression is a subset of supervised learning. Linear regression, which really means something very similar, uh, although regression may mean other things. Uh, and they put here ridge regression, which is just one example uh, of something we call regularization. It's a, it's a trick uh, that you can do in pretty much every machine learning model. Okay, so those were the skills. Now, what do you need to get started? Well, it says here intermediate level. And uh, I took a look at the FAQ and what exactly they, uh, they define by that. So in the FAQ, what background knowledge is necessary Ideally, you should have some background in math, stats, computer programming, as most demonstrations, labs, and projects use Python programming language and concepts like mat matrix factorization, convergence, stochastic gradient descent. So basically what it's saying is that Python or its libraries are implementing things uh, that it's not really gonna explain too much. And so there's kind of suggesting that you're already kind of familiar with what it's doing. Um, it's not strictly necessary. If you want to learn those things, uh, I would recommend the uh, Math for Machine Learning in the description of this video, uh, as well as the Andrewing Machine Learning course. Uh, that would also help as well before doing this. If you're having trouble, I would definitely recommend uh, doing both of those and maybe even the IBM Data Science before this. That's probably not a bad idea. Okay, so I, I just, I would be careful about making this the very first thing that you do. At least make sure that you have Python knowledge before you get uh, too far into anything. Okay, so courses. Uh, the first one, Exploratory Data Analysis for Machine Learning. 4.6 stars on 629 ratings. This first course in the IBM Machine Learning Professional Certificate introduces you to ML and the content of the professional certificate. In this course, you will realize the importance of good quality data, common techniques to retrieve your data, clean it, apply feature engineering, and have it ready for analysis and hypothesis testing. So working with data, um, by the end of the course, you should be able to get it using SQL, no SQL, APIs, and of course the cloud. Describe and use common feature selection and feature engineering techniques. Okay, so how to make better variables, uh, how to handle categorical and ordinal features. Encoding techniques is very important for training all models. Uh, use a variety of techniques for detecting and dealing with outliers. Articulate why feature scaling is important and use a variety of scaling techniques. Okay, yes, you have to scale, scale your variables. Luckily, they will talk about how to do that. To make the most out of this course, you should have familiarity with programming on a Python development environment as well as understanding of calculus, linear algebra, probability, and statistics. So again, to learn those things, uh, the Math for Machine Learning course in the description and the Andrewing Machine Learning course will help with that for sure. Supervised Machine Learning Regression. Okay, so taking a, an in-depth look at regression, this course introduces you to one of the main types of modeling families of supervised machine learning, which is regression. It means predicting continuous values like a height or a weight. You will learn how to train regression models to predict continuous outcomes, okay, continuous values, 
and how to use error metrics like the mean squared error to compare across different models. It'll walk you through best practices, including train and test splits. Okay, this is really, really important. And regularization techniques, penalizing the model so that it, uh, it doesn't overfit. By the end of this course, you should be able to differentiate uses and applications of classification and regression in the context of supervised machine learning. So it's kind of interesting. They call it regression, but they will introduce classification a little bit. Don't worry, classification is the course after this. So describe and use linear regression models, a variety of error metrics to compare, uh, and select the best one. Articulate why regularization may help prevent overfitting. Use regularization regressions, so ridge, lasso, and elastic net, which is, uh, this is the L1 error, the absolute value, ridge is the L2 error, the squared, and elastic net is a combination of the both. Who should take this? People that want to learn a lot about machine learning. Pretty simple. Uh, supervised machine learning classification. Okay, it introduces you to one of the main types of modeling families of classification. What that means, you will learn how to train predictive models to classify categorical outcomes. So there's regression, which is predicting continuous values, and there's classification, which is predicting discrete outcomes. So red, green, blue, uh, different animals, that type of thing. Uh, and there's a lot of different error metrics to compare across different models. Uh, I actually put a lot of effort into my video uh, where I talked about all of those different metrics. The hands-on section of this course focuses on using best practices for classification, including train and test splits, again, very, very important, and handling data sets with unbalanced classes. Okay, really, really important topic right there. A lot of people don't know this uh, and you come across it or they come across it on like a LinkedIn post or something. Uh, you definitely have to know how to handle unbalanced classes. So by the end of the course, you should be able to differentiate uses and applications of classification in ensembles, describe and use logistic regression models, the, probably the first uh, technique that you should use and definitely learn about for classification, describe and use decision tree and tree ensemble methods, which is uh, random forests and gradient boosting or XG boost models, describe and use other ensemble methods for classification, of course, use a variety of error metrics to compare and select the classification model that best suits your data, and use oversampling and undersampling as techniques to handle unbalanced classes in a data set. These sound like fancy words. Really, this is taking more of what you have very little of, and undersampling means taking less of what you have more of. It's that simple. And okay, course four is unsupervised learning. So courses three and two is regression and classification, which are both under the umbrella of supervised learning. And now we have the umbrella of unsupervised learning. The difference, I'm sure they'll tell you, uh, but the difference basically, supervised learning, you are trying to predict some sort of outcome, and so you have labels of the outcome. Unsupervised learning, you don't really have some outcome variable, it's just you have data and you're trying to learn about that data, understand that. So this course teaches you uh, one of the main types of machine learning, unsupervised learning. You will learn several clustering and dimension reduction algorithms. So clustering is basically trying to figure out what group something belongs to. Uh, and dimension reduction means given a bunch of different variables, try and shrink that into a meaningful subset of smaller variables, maybe to help you in supervised learning. By the end of the course, you should be able to explain the kinds of problems suitable for unsupervised learning approaches. Uh, the curse of dimensionality, which means if you do stuff uh, the wrong way, or sometimes it happens naturally, uh, you get way too many variables, and that's almost always a problem for computational means, and just understanding, you know, dealing with a lot of things can be difficult. And how it makes clustering difficult with many features. Yeah, clustering definitely uh, has a lot of trouble with more features for sure. Describe and use common clustering and dimensionality reduction algorithms. So the two they'll definitely talk about are um, so k-means as well as db-scan. And from there, there's uh, other ones that kind of build on those and some other techniques as well. Uh, dimensionality reduction, I'm sure they'll talk about PCA. Uh, and if they do, it's before deep learning, so they probably won't talk about autoencoders. Uh, but that's the deep learning way to do dimensionality reduction. Try clustering points where appropriate, compare the performance of per cluster models, of course, and metrics for characterizing clusters, absolutely. All right, so course five is on to deep learning. So that means we're gonna start using TensorFlow. Pretty much everything here and above, you can do, uh, you'll be using NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn. For this, you will use all of those, but then they will also teach you about TensorFlow, okay? So this course introduces you to one of the most sought after disciplines in machine learning. It really, really is deep learning and reinforcement learning. To be honest, no. So this is not one of the most sought after skills. It is one of the most uh, rare to find skills, 
it's not exactly one of the most sought after as there's not met that many people working on reinforcement learning right now, uh, but deep learning 100% and reinforcement learning, it is going to get a lot more popular in the future. So uh, yeah, I just want to kind of clarify what they mean there. Deep learning is indeed a subset of machine learning that has applications in both supervised and unsupervised learning and is frequently used to power most of the AI applications that we use on a daily basis. I don't know about most, although it definitely is. Uh, actually, I agree with that. The things that we use on a daily basis, like Google search, um, well, Microsoft search, pretty much anything that you use all the time, Instagram, uh, those sort of applications, they probably are doing some sort of deep learning to estimate something like uh, what video you should watch next, uh, what tweet is actually spam or not spam, uh, that type of thing. So it really is common. And of course, several modern architectures of deep learning. Once you've developed a few deep learning models, the course will focus on reinforcement learning, a type of machine learning that has caught up more attention recently. It is catching up, but it is definitely behind. So focus, uh, if you like the reinforcement learning stuff, if it seems interesting to you, uh, then absolutely pursue it. Uh, but if you are just trying to get a job as quickly as possible, don't spend too, too much time on the reinforcement learning stuff. Okay, specialized models, time series, and survival analysis. One of the, I don't know why it works out this way, but uh, one of the most commonly uh, needed skills is time series analysis, yet it is also one of the least, uh, one of the things that is given the least amount of uh, resources is different courses online uh, and even school, like of course there's a forecasting course in my school, um, but it, you know, it's just basically one course and it is so, so, so important and common. And if you want to get a job, understand time series, please. Uh, this will talk about that and it's going to show you moving average, autoregressive, ARIMA models, uh, talk about trend, seasonality, residuals, this stuff, the, these techniques will take you everywhere. Like you will remember this and probably use this for you know, forever. Seriously, time series comes up just all the time. Like so many things, not everything, but basically everything is a time series. When we go to look at data in a company, like stuff's happening every day, uh, that's a time series. Language, I'm telling you a sentence and the order of the words matter. It's a time series. Um, the weather, <laughs> you know, uh, IBM actually owns uh, the weather network or whatever. And that of course is a time series. So Pretty, pretty important stuff. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about what the course actually involves here. It teaches you about uh, time series and all these different, uh, all these different ideas. Please learn it. It's very useful. Okay, so honestly, I really wish that this had a lot more people taking it than it has. I think it's great. Uh, the people think it's great because it has 4.7 stars, just not that big amount of num uh, number of them. I think this deserves a lot more credit and. You know, definitely if you if you are in the space where this is something useful, then highly consider it. If you are looking to improve your LinkedIn, uh, this professional certificate, not that many people have it, would definitely recommend uh, getting that. I do have a link in the description down below if you want to take a look at it for yourself. But uh, I'm a huge advocate of this. If you are new to the channel, uh, consider subscribing. Take a look at my various videos. See if something is interesting to you. Uh, and please drop a like on this video if you did find it helpful. That's really valuable to me. Uh, I'd appreciate that. And yeah, no matter what, uh, I'll see you later and bye-bye.